Test, test. All right. Good evening, everyone. Today is Monday, June 26th, and the time is 6.05 p.m. And this meeting is called to order. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Madam Clerk, roll call, please. Councilmember Brescher. Here. Councilmember Coyle. Here. Councilmember Harris. Here. Councilmember Patel. Councilmember Patil. Councilmember Pointer. Present. Councilmember Ship Freeman. Uh, Madam Clerk, adequate notice, please. Adequate notice of this meeting as required by the Open Public Meeting Act of 1975 has been provided by the annual notice sent to the Home News Tribune, Star Ledger, Sentinel, and Desi Talk on December 1st, 2022, and post Main Lobby Municipal Complex on that same date. Thank you. At this time, we'll open up for oral petitions and remarks, starting from the list. Mr. Diamond. Mr. Diamond, before you start, um, just out of courtesy and make it part of uh, repertoire, I'm just going to read um, some of the guidelines for oral petitions. I know it's a lighter crowd, but just as a formality. Um, just as a general guideline, each speaker is allotted six minutes with one three-minute rebuttal provided per meeting. Rebuttal means you are making a comment on a comment made by another member of the public on a different issue from which you originally spoke on. The deputy clerk will announce when speakers have one minute remaining in their speaking time to assist with timing. Any questions presented are to be addressed to the council president. Council is not required to address questions. However, I will afford the opportunity to respond on questions only. Any responses by the council and or administration to pose, any responses by the council or administration to pose questions will count against the speaker's time and time will not be halted. When a speaker comes up to the podium, I will request the speaker's name and address. The speaker, if for any reason feels uncomfortable providing, can state they don't wish to present and I will recognize the speaker. Additionally, I know that I mentioned about uh, questions in regards to us responding. If there is a comment that the council would like to respond, I ask that it is held until discussion items. Thank you. My apologies, Mr. Diamond. Bruce Diamond Calvert, one quick question, 10F. Can you explain what that is and what's that for? Thank you. The line striping machine? Uh, there are two striping machines for um, road. Um, They're definitely road. for roads. Yeah, one white, one yellow. So we don't have to outsource line painting anymore? That is now in-house? That is my understanding. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments from the council? We're off the list. Anyone else from the public? Can I get a motion to close the public portion? Motion to close public portion. Second. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? The public portion is now closed. At this time, we'll move to reports from all council committees. Starting to my right, Councilman Brescher. Oh. Uh, excuse me, Council President. I, I was paying attention to no worries. Joe. <laughs> uh, your question was? Uh, committee reports. Oh, uh, committee reports, yes. Um, just to update the public on the public advocate anyway. Uh, we received the um, legal, I guess, opinion or, or advice that they gave us. We're gonna send that back to the committee um, for the committee to take a look at because it looks like certain aspects of it might need to be modified in a way. Um, but that I, I'll have out by tomorrow to the rest of the committee. Um, that would be a council president. Thank you, sir. Councilman Coyle. Council president, can I go last? Sure. Council vice president Harris. Yes, <clears throat> I have two. The first one is cultural arts commission. That meeting was held on June 13th at 6 p.m. And at that meeting, we had the mayor in attendance for a good part of it. And he wanted to emphasize the concept of inclusion, whereby we have arts in every form that can pro provide a level of community that is not otherwise present. 
um, he was suggesting that we look for places to find buildings to find where we might be able to place some murals. And uh, he suggested that each of us go around town and look for 10 different locations where we might be able to place murals. Um, he also suggested we publicize applications to exhibit in the gallery with a max, the maximum for exhibition would be 10 days. Um, and then there would be a few days of rollover for the next exhibit. And the first, the first exhibit would be on Thomas Edison. Um, he suggested we start soliciting applications in the next week or two, and the committee will, would vet these applications. Um, with regard to the Ferrante House, the, it's going to probably be called the Edison House or Edison Museum, and there will be receptions for exhibitors from the gallery. So the gallery downstairs, receptions for these events might be held over at this, uh, at this museum off of wood. Um, he also was suggesting a Holocaust exhibit to be placed here in Town Hall. And the next meeting will be held on July 11th at 6 p.m. The, oh, the other thing I should say in the cultural arts, we had a mission, the, we, we agreed on the mission statement, which is Edison Township is a community rich in cultural and ethic, ethnic diversity, a blend of customs, traditions, and arts that serve the foundation of our identity. The Edison Township Cultural Arts Commission is tasked with developing venues that will explore and enhance the various customs and traditions of our township by promoting exhibits, cultural activities, and creative opportunities encompassing that broad range of cultural and ethnic diversity. <clears throat> Through promoting these venues, providers will be able to showcase their individual cultures while enabling the public to see and experience the broad fusion of these diverse elements that enrich and define, and define Edison. So that is the report on Cultural Arts Library Board, which was held the same day on June 13th. Um, the president, Matt, uh, Pat Massey, had mentioned she attended the New Jersey Library Con Conference, and there was a uh, there was a talk about the, the Clara Barton preservation, and we wanted to put to rest the rumors of any any closings of Clara Barton that that's completely false. There are, are no plans for closing Clara Barton, so we want to make that really clear. Uh, the director's report, we, they have hired a social work intern. It's a pilot project that will help with some of the programs there. It's, uh, this person will be serving for the whole school year, about 15 hours a week. Bookmobile update, uh, that's been delayed. It needs approval from each location um, by a community board. A new start date for that is July 10th. Summer reading is uh, the end of June. All three branches, that, uh, that program will be taking place at all three branches. Um, the 2021 audit results are also coming soon. Um, the, uh, it was the items that were approved, establishing Friends of Edison Library resolution was approved. The resolution to extend the building cleaning contract for one year from June 2023 to May 2024 to AAA Facility Solutions. Um, that was approved. Resolution to close the main branch of the Edison Public Library on Sundays during July and August was approved. Resolution to move 750000 from the operating account to the capital account for main library renovation and 750000 from the operating account to the North Edison branch capital account to cover the cost of the roof replacement as part of the upcoming project was also approved. And that concludes my report. And the next meeting for the uh, library board is also on July 11th. Thank you, Council President. Thank you, Council Vice President Harris. Councilman Patel. <clears throat> So the first uh, committee that I want to review is the Billboard Committee. Uh, we found some great information from Franklin Township and the court case uh, from New Jersey Supreme Court, uh, which we are reviewing now. And we will be meeting this Thursday uh, to see what we learned from that case and how we can update our ordinance so it will be legal and uh, enforceable. And we have a rough draft of the design, uh, which we sourced a lot of the material from the Franklin Township and we will finalize this Thursday. The next committee is Open Space Committee. Um, the idea of the power line trails uh, with the bike paths connecting all of Edison. Uh, we have three power line trails, and if we can get bike paths under them, 
we would essentially have a very safe space for Edison residents to use to commute between town. This was an idea that was proposed a while back and uh, in Open Space Committee. And we, Robert Deal has been working with uh, Mr. Raynon uh, to get a contract from West Windsor, which we did. We're reviewing it now. And uh, we discussed with West Windsor as to how they approached PSENG and how did they get them to give us the authorization. And West Windsor got a 50-year contract uh, to get this done. And they have a great contract that they were really happy with. And they are working with us to get the, all, all the information <clears throat> they can. They did say it took about two years, and it took some coaxing on their side to let PSENG do this, because PNC doesn't really want to do this all the time. Uh, and the next committee is the Finance Committee. Uh, we will be meeting this Wednesday right before uh, our council meeting. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Councilman Patel. Councilman Patil. Thank you, Council President. I'm not sure uh, Councilman Brescher updated on the Public Advocate Committee. Uh, but that exchange has been shared. I just want to bring up and hopefully the council, the, who the committee members are, will provide our input to the attorney. Yes, he did uh, provide a previous update. Uh, thank you. Thank you, sir. Councilwoman Shep Freeman. Um, starting with, I had a meeting also with the Middlesex County Jazz Commission, in which we are the lead off for the Jazz Commission, and um, we didn't get any uh, money from the town, so. Uh, we're reaching out to different venues for people to donate money to get, uh, form a logo and to get some information for, um, since we're leading, since we're the headliner in the jazz festival this year. Then I, um, the housing, the housing meeting um, is still, still working on RAD because some things that were supposed to develop from here in Edison didn't develop yet about money and housing and all that and people not wanting private and wanting public. So those did bring become major issues in the RAD, RAD um, uh, meeting and uh, with the developers and everybody, you know how that goes. And um, the Human Relations Committee now has a new, uh, a new leader. Um, Maria Wise, and the problems they're having now is that within the um, ordinance I did like two years ago, it is it's supposed to be having a training session, but the diverse group of people are not, they're not, um, nobody can put anybody on it but the mayor. He's the only one that has a jurisdiction. So it's very slow, and they want um, some line items, whereas they can be trained, where they can have T-shirts, and where they can be involved in other things going on. Because we examined other towns, and the Human Relations Committee is seen to be involved in most of the, um, not in charge, but involved in most of the stuff that goes on. And they were uh, disappointed that they're not being recognized like the rest of the committees that we have here in Edison. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Councilwoman Sheriff Freeman. As for myself, um, the Deer Population Management uh, Committee, we are uh, going to be reaching out to one of the state officials uh, to see what options are there. Um, we have done some preliminary information gathering in regards to uh, what other municipalities have done around Middlesex County, what counties have done, and pretty much the last piece of information is seeing what the uh, state may advise. In regards to the Smart City Advisory Committee, we had a meeting last Thursday to uh, work on the presentation for the council and the administration. We are working on finalizing a date for that presentation. Originally, it was uh, figuring for um, July, but with uh, the planning board and the figured introduction or the figured budget being voted on then, um, figured it might be better to hold off until August, um, but we're trying to work out scheduling with that, uh, whether it be August or September. So that would be it for myself. Councilman Coyle. Thank you, Council President. Um, although we have not had a DPW meeting, uh, the last time we've met, I did follow up with the administration on different lists of things that have been accomplished. And for those who are listening out there, <clears throat> DPW has taken on a lot more than 
they have in the past. In fact, I think if you made a comparison through administrations, this DPW group and staff have done probably 10 times more than what's happened through previous administrations. Uh, just for instance, our facility-based maintenance uh, programs on building maintenance and on park maintenance. If you're up in the morning at 645, you will see a truck pass you that's ready to cut parks. And I think that's something I followed up with our chief of staff, Bob Deal, and teams are going to get out on time and to parks to get the best performance from for our taxpayers. And they're out there. So this means when someone punches in at the parks department, they're already in a truck that's prepared, self-contained with all the equipment they need to head out to a park. So this is a, a truly a great accomplishment. And I continue through our committee, we follow up with the administration on things like this. But also when it comes to workflow processes in this township building, just take a look around. If you're a resident paying your taxes, walk around and just take a look. This building has made a complete transformation. You can't argue with it. I and mean, we have new floors, new carpeting in area, new walls, crown molding in different areas. And let's take into account at the same time, it's the same staff doing some of the same work that has the responsibility to do work throughout the entire town. So I commend them for the work and the inspiration of our staff wanting to do this work. And we're not outsourcing. We're doing our own sheetrock. We're doing our own stud work. We're doing our own electrical work. And the facilities and the office space itself were transformed completely so that different departments can work you know, alongside each other when and if it makes sense. So I just want to mention some of the things the committee, again, we don't meet every month, but we do follow up with the administration to make sure things are still happening. And in the same breath, we have more events, and they're doing a fantastic job with their event. Juneteenth went off as planned, and it was done a fantastic job with that, along with our flag raisings that we continue to have. And let's not forget the community garden that was just done, and they did this themselves. I mean, it's a remarkable job of what happened here, and I want to thank this council who believed in the vision for community gardens uh, through the, our council president's leadership and our administration. This is truly remarkable, the amount of people that get together to come out for the community gardens. So this is just really, really wonderful work that's happening here. That, that was at Dwyer Park, our second one in 12 months. So as I spin the clock and point to other administrations that have been here in the past, other directors that have been here in the past, you can compare what's going on today. It's a complete 360 to the 12th power. It's really been amazing what's going on here. Although I still push, residents complain that they're not in Clara Barton enough, but there is some reasons for that, and I'll, 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 I'll yield some of the complaints I get for them not being there as much as they could. But when I look around, you know, you have to re-divert your staff, and, and we, we're understanding to that. So uh, just thanks to the administration. Thanks to Council President. Thank you, sir. Any other uh, committee reports? Hearing none at this time for points of light. Any points of light? Yes, Council President. Yes, uh, Council Vice President Harris. Yes, I had the honor, along with Councilwoman Ship Freeman and with Council President Pointer, of attending the Asian law enforcement event on Saturday. It was law enforcement and recruitment. And considering the weather being so threatening, it was a wonderful attendance there. And there were representatives from law enforcement from police forces from corrections departments all across the state and uh, it's a terrific event and joe luistro retired police officer sergeant uh, luistro from edison always always really uh, nails this event and uh, he's a wonderful wonderful man there were presentations uh, from children there uh, some uh, uh, Councilman Ship Freeman, what is the the thing with the co with the costumes with the like dragon things? Do you know? What oh yeah, talking? yeah, yeah. When they do the dragon, the red dragon, they take over the show, and yeah. then uh, the young kids had other um, I don't know what you would call it, taekwondo or something like that. Yes. And they perform beautifully yeah. at all. It's a wonderful event, and it's, Very. it's held every year. And so now at that event, uh, as I segue, at that event, Councilwoman Ship Freeman was presented with a birthday cake. And you know why? Because Councilwoman Ship Freeman's birthday is today. 
So I'm going to give her a hand. I already made her day by singing happy birthday to her like Marilyn Monroe sang to President Kennedy. So I just want to point that out. So, um, but anyway, happy birthday and many happy returns to you, Councilwoman. Thank you very much. Thank you. Any other? Uh, yes. <laughs> yes, Councilwoman Schiffer. I always love to go to, uh, with Joe Luis show to the Asian um, police recruiting, recruiting uh, place and um, our AG from the state, Plaxton, was there speaking at the same time. And I like going there because um, Joe Luistro is no longer the president at this particular time, but they have a new president. And she said, we will not stop the tradition of having a birthday cake for you every time you come to our Asian event. So they have one because when I know it's coming, I know my birthday is somewhere near. But also on Friday, um, small blessings. Um, I love going to the, see what the future is going to look like when you go see the preschool children and they all have developed their personalities already. I had a nice time watching the kids for the graduation on Friday, Friday morning, yes. And it was a very, 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 very good and very uh, exciting to see all of them all over the place. But as you know, after 20 minutes, the kids want to go. <laughs> They're ready. They don't want to sit in their seats anymore. But other than that, in the Asian um, it was very, very nice, very nice weekend. And it rained in between, correct? Uh, it rained in between, but it, the rain didn't stop the show. We still had a great time, and we still seen a lot there. And uh, Sergeant Luis Joe is just the best. He is. Thank you, Councilman Shafun. Any other points of play? Yes, uh, Councilman Patel. I just want to wish you a happy birthday. Should we sing you a song? <laughs> Councilman Patil. Council President, uh, Arts of Living had the International Yoga Day this Saturday. And Sunday, actually, it was Saturday due to the rain. It was moved to Sunday. And I was glad to attend. There were close to 100 people who enjoyed the Yoga Day. Uh, for Council President, I would recommend uh, the similar program for our law enforcement, police, fire, or any of those. Uh, it will be really uh, the helpful. It will relieve the stress, anxiety. Uh, you know, there are multiple elements. I always call that as a mental health, the spiritual, and the physical health, and it will be a wonderful experience. So there was a request from that organization that they would like to come and showcase the yoga to our law enforcement uh, department. The second one was the Lions uh, event. Uh, it was a fundraising event a music with the musical performance. A great audience. We had the local artist who sang Bollywood, Hollywood songs. Uh, great event, uh, great attendance, and really my Sunday was well spent. Thank you, Council President. Thank you, sir. Any other points of light? Um, I normally have the list of meetings. I apologize. I do not have that. Uh, ready for tonight. I'll make sure to make an announcement during council president remarks on Wednesday. Uh, but just as a note, the July 4th um, fireworks event is on July 4th at Lake Papiani. <laughs> the total event is from 3 to 10 p.m. And I believe the fireworks uh, begin at 9.30 p.m. Thank you. Any other points of light? Seeing none, moving on to the agenda. Seven, from the Department of Finance. A, reports of disbursements through June 22nd. B, resolution authorizing refund for tax sales certificate redemption, 485-924. C, resolution authorizing tax overpayment refund, $2,309. D, resolution authorizing sewer overpayment refund, $18,807. E, resolution authorizing cancellation and refund of taxes for exempted disabled veteran. F, resolution authorizes the settlement of three tax appeals. And G, resolution authorizing overpayment refund caused by successful tax court appeal. Any questions, comments, or concerns? Council Mr. Deal. Oh, I have a lot of questions on multiple areas here. <clears throat> Number one for the, the first one, the report of disbursement. Uh, just want to make sure that we are within the cap for this disbursement and there is no, we are not crossing the cap. That was one question. Are you referring to the cap? Is that what I yes. understood? Okay. Um, yes, we're, we're within, within the cap. The, okay, mm -hmm. thank you. 
Uh, second one is on the resolution authorizing refund, four hundred ninety-five thousand uh, dollar. If you remember, you know, the beginning of the year, you know, we were debating why can't we keep the zero percent interest, uh, but you know, we cap to the max. So my question here is: now we are re we started refunding uh, or giving back this money to whoever they own. Uh, the properties, or where purchased those tax sales certificate. What was the net benefit to the Edison Township from this four hundred eighty-five thousand refund, or close to four hundred eighty-six thousand dollar refund? Any ballpark? Because we do spend money on sending the uh, letters to the residents, uh, uh, probably reminding them. Uh, but there are multiple activities. So what is the net net benefit for Edison Township just from the redemption of the tax sale certificate? Are you looking for a quantity of what it is that Do we benefit? Dollar amount. I'm sorry? Dollar amount. Dollar amount. I don't have that for you, but I can get that to you. Thank you. Uh, next one is the resolution authorizing the tax appeal. I don't know which one deals with the Metroplex. Uh, council President, I wanted to talk to you about that. I believe it is somewhere like roughly 265,000 square feet tax appeal. There are three of them. Uh, the market value that is proposed, knowing where we are in Edison, it's too low. Again, I don't know who takes that decision, but I was very disappointed that we are giving back more than a million dollars uh, in the this tax settlement. So if you can give somebody that detail on that, you know, how that tax settlement was reached out. Yeah. Yeah. Good evening, Council. Joanne Jimenez, tax assessor. Um, the Metroplex Associates uh, settlement um, came to be as a result of uh, an in-person trial date that was scheduled and then changed to a settlement conference. So the market value that we had for the property came between 32 to 37. We had it assessed at seventeen million five, which translated to a market value of approximately forty million. Um, so our settlement is nowhere near the twenty-four thousand million that they had contested the value of the property was worth. So we were ready to go to trial. Um, however, the um, judge assigned to the case felt that we were close enough in our negotiations that we should take a stab at it and basically encouraged us to come to a settlement as opposed to um, spending more time prepping for trial. And that is why this appeal has been presented to you all. It's the judge's um, uh, blessed settlement negotiation on the matter. But to me, that's, uh, again, being in Edison Township, we know the property values around here. This is the prime property. And even if I look at their insurance replacement cost, which will be close to $40 million. So what we're talking here is giving back them pretty much more than half. And this is not the impact I'm looking just for a couple of years. This is going forward also impact our tax revenue. Right. Well, with I'm, I'm COVID, at this point, Council President, I'm going to have to interject and say that the I'm going to ask the tax assessor not to answer any additional questions in public comment. Um, this is, matter is uh, a, a pending litigated matter, at which time we would have to go into a closed session. I highly recommend it at this time if this line of questioning is going to continue. Yeah. If there are no question to be answered, I don't know. We we shouldn't have this even atom on the agenda unless we hash out those internal details at or the, have the enough. We, we certainly can. If I can just explain, we certainly can do that, Councilman. But what, what what we're doing is we are undermining our litigation position by mm -hmm. having this conversation in a public session. And the law specifically allows us to have this in a closed session so that we do not, um, lo uh, we, we do not divulge our trial strategy. Understood, understood. I'm, again, I'm not debating on that, but what I, what I understand, because this resolution is already on the agenda, 
and this council has been asked to approve. So technically, there is no litigation at this point in time. Well, this no, is already a settlement. There, this is not approved until this council approves it. Correct, but so, that's what I'm saying. So I'm going to once Correct. again ask the assessor not to answer additional questions in public comment if, for the if, sake of the township. If, that's perfectly if, fine. Again, yeah, Council President. Uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. If I could suggest, um, I don't know if the appropriate time would be to go into closed session at this point or if we are open to doing that at the end of the meeting. Is there any... We can do it at the end of the meeting. I'm fine with that. Okay. I, if that's, if it, it, it's, it's through the councilman's request. I'm, I'm fine, but if the councilman needs further uh, answers, I understand the councilor's uh, position. Okay. So I, I would recommend then that we go into closed session at the end of the meeting to discuss this particular uh, resolution. Okay. That's okay. Appreciate that. Makes Thank sense. You. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, and I appreciate the understanding of everyone. Any other uh, questions, Councilman Patil? Nope. That's it. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments or questions from other council members? Say none. Eight, from the Department of Health. A, resolution awarding contract purchase order for your senior bus repair, $65,020. B, resolution authorizing contract purchase order for Chevy Tahoe, $48,032. Any questions or concerns? Yeah. Council yes, President. Yes, uh, Councilwoman Chef Freeman. Yeah. Sorry. Council President. $65,000 for the repair? Like, how much is a new bus? So, I see the Tahoe here for uh, almost 50000 which I guess is okay because I've been to the car dealership, so I figure that's not too much. I know that on the recent, the new bus that was being purchased, I believe the final value was approximately $140,000. Uh, I'll confirm on that. If I'm not mistaken, though, and maybe our business administrator can confirm, uh, outside of the deductible, which is 2500 the rest of that would be covered through insurance? Correct. Um, if I may, so this was part of, uh, um, there was an accident that had happened. Um, unfortunately, it wasn't a total loss. So because of that, we did have to make the repairs. So in order to get the bus back uh, to our senior programs, we need to make sure we... Um, Pay the pay the vendor, and receive the truck uh, receive the bus back. So we were in fault of the accident. That I'm personally not aware of. If we paying, <laughs> if we paying, we had to be in fault. There was an accident uh, involving um, a, a township employee, and I I don't know that I need to. Uh, sorry. No, no, I don't need to know all the extra details. I just wanted to know if we were. I don't. I don't need to know the person's name or anything. Just want to know what we had fault. Point of order, Council. I, I can't this, this answer that. This has nothing that. to do with the question of the purchase. The purchase uh, is what we're doing I, for repairs. Are we doing repairs I, or not? I, I find that it is actually in line because that's the preface of how we actually get to this point. So I do find the line of questioning within Thank you. the, the, the uh, boundaries of the resolution. How would you like me to? So there was an accident and. Yeah. Um, Remember, I told you, I don't need to know the personal sure. details like this other person thinks. I don't need to need the personal details. But I know from an accident, the person who usually has to pay and has to pay for their own stuff is usually the person that's in the actual accident. Yeah. Correct. So in that in that case, yes. Um, and so therefore, we filed it with our insurance carrier, paid our deductible, and we did end up having to get the bus repaired because it was not a total loss. And in order for us to receive, we need to make sure that we... Um, One last question. How old, what year was the bus? It's uh, 2017 Ford. All right, thank you. Sure. Thank you. Sorry, any other questions? Yes, Councilman Brescher? Yes. Um, the Chevy Tahoe, uh, and, you know, I mean, $48,000, like my council colleague said, right, she's been to a dealer. But uh, my question was, I, I believe, I, I remember being on the school board, and they had some kind of Ford, I think it was like Explorers, and they were like 26000 or something like that. And, and I do know that inflation, right, has went up and the cost of cars has went up. But is this Tahoe similar in price to a, like a Ford Explorer? Because I think our police department has a bunch of Ford Explorers, or, or we approved a bunch of Ford Explorers at one time. Um. I can get back to you on the pricing. Um, the issue that we have with the Ford Explorers is their availability through the state contract. So because of that, the Tahoes are the ones that are available. Um, and in this case, this is for our animal shelter, and we've been in dire need 
of vehicles. Um, and again, we go through state contract and what they have available to us are the Tahoes. But I can get the pricing for you on the Fords uh, from any from the from the state contract dealer, if you will. Yeah, I'd like to see what what the difference is. I mean, I do understand emergencies, but uh, emergencies typically take place because there was no planning prior to that. Right? It happens with all of us. Right? We we keep our cars too long, and then everything goes wrong. Um, but. Yeah, I'd like to see what, what the Fords are, because I know that we approved a bunch of them in the prior administration. I'd like to see the difference. Yes, the only thing is, is the supply chain issue that we're having with the Ford vehicles, with the Explorers, that is. But I will get to you the pricing, and hopefully at some point they'll become available in the future to us. Understandable. Thank you. And uh, just on, in addition to that, from uh, another conversation that I had um, in regards, I believe it was Ford, I'll confirm, but there was some issues after a bit in regards to the actual like body of the truck that the, some of our departments were having. I'll, I'll confirm on that, but I think that uh, may also tie into some of this as well. And, Thank you. And, uh, Council President, if I may add, I actually have our um, uh, Warren Sewer director here who actually placed an order going on now two years in August for explorers, and we have yet to receive them. So um, it's it's going through various departments. So you're probably going to see more of the Tahoes coming before you because of the supply chain issue we've been having with the Explorers. Not to mention the colors, if that becomes an issue. <laughs> I appreciate the explanation. Any other comments or questions? Yes, uh, Councilman Cora. I just, uh, for A, Council President, I'm just in full support of the seniors getting their bus repaired. They wait long enough for a lot of things, and they're certainly never get enough support. It's always more for our seniors. So as soon as we can get this bus back on the road, it's worth every penny. Thank you, Council President. Thank you. And for myself, um, in regards to the senior bus repair, I was happy to see that the original price quoted was actually reduced down 11%. So it's always nice to see savings. Um, moving on, nine, from the Department of Planning and Engineering. A, resolution provides for a refund for construction permit fee due to cancellation. B, resolution provides for a refund for senior resident. C, resolution authorizing a grant of $20,000 from the Township's Affordable Housing Affordability Assistance Program for the purchase of an affordable housing unit. And D, resolution authorizing change order one to Papiani Park Synthetic Turf Field Improvements, $96,085. Any questions or concerns or comments? Council President. C. Tide goes to the runner. <laughs> Councilman Coyle. C. Um, I think this is wonderful uh, what happens here for this affordable housing, but I guess to the administration, I don't need the answer today. Um, are we in the future going to have some education seminars or anything online or on our television directing people for this opportunities that, that or, or there and available? Uh, we certainly can. They're, CGP and H, who we contract to run the affordable housing, they actually have the literature together, and I can certainly circulate amongst the council members if you'd like, um, because there's a fulsome amount of information in there about how you qualify, how you get on the list. So, um, uh, Just in the future, through the council president, I hope we can start promoting it, aside from the brochure. It, Somewhere, somehow, through our Council social President. media. I'm still speaking, Council oh, President. Excuse me. Um, and it would just be important. Affordable housing is important. And these programs, I, I just, people just don't know enough about them. Through this council, uh, I know a house has been, been purchased on Glen Court. We have $100,000 towards that. This, we had, did a few others. And it's a remarkable opportunity. But, you know, people just don't always know how to shuffle to get there. And I think we can do more to spotlight that because it's great work. Thank you, Council President. Thank you, Councilman Cole. Councilwoman Michelle Freeman. Um, Council President, we have two meetings on this a year already. We, I have like, you know, if materials and stuff that you need on it, I can give you materials on it for being on the housing and getting involved in the community for the information that people need. Like she said, she can get extra stuff, but most of this stuff is meeting twice and they also place it online for people who are having difficulty um, paying their, their rent, and I think even last year, we 
you can get like $85,000 to $100,000 or more if you just fit, if you fit right in, you fit in that particular box, you'll be able to get that at all to help you along. Because within this town, they're encouraging people to purchase homes and get out of housing. That's been going on for a, a good while. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, uh, Councilman Patel. 490. I had a question. Why is this change order necessary? Uh, do we have an explanation on that? 90, just um, short. This had to do with the placement of the bleachers. Um, so in anticipation of the sports building coming into play, the current placement of bleachers, from what I understand, had it not been moved now, um, it, it w and with the sports season coming up in August, mm -hmm. it would become a safety issue. So we don't necessarily want anyone near where the um, sports building is going to start happening. So having moved that now, um, it really uh, balances that and obviously is a safer, safer environment for uh, all the spectators that are coming in. Yes, uh, Councilman Patil. Yeah, I had a question on the same uh, topic, D. A uh, question through Council President to our administration. Have we done the topographic survey of that area? When we put the turf, when we planned for the turf field, did we do the topography survey? Yes, that was all inclusive of the engineering work Correct. that was completed. That, I remember that. That's why I asked that question. So thank you for that answer. It should have highlighted what all other things are in that neighborhood when we were planning for the turf field. And of course, you know, this should have been really right on that survey. So my question here is, was it an oversight or we didn't think through, or was that something else that triggered? We could have literally looked probably a year ago and say, hey, probably we need to move this thing because we are putting a turf field here. So let's put that as a part of the same bid rather than coming back with the change order? Um, I'm not sorry, go ahead, Kat. No, you can answer first. I, I have a... With regard to change orders, you are allowed to, to, to have some sort of uh, room and flexibility there. Um, like any construction project, once you start to, to really break ground and, and review all of the things that are about to happen, um, there's obviously consideration of moving some things. And in this case, it was bleachers for safety reasons. So um, that was really the the reason why there is a change order and having it done now rather than later. So in the future, what this may do is offset some of the costs that the sports building could potentially have if we're moving the bleachers now. I can't promise you that necessarily, but of course there may be things in the future, but in this case, doing it now better than later. And that's where my point was, you know, if we could have taken one step back and rethought about the, the entire plan end to end and then move on piece by piece, but it looks like we moved ahead with the synthetic turf. Now we are saying it is a good idea to move this. It's an accidental. Again, I'm in fully support because we need to get this project moved on. It's just my disappointment that, you know, things could have planned better. Thank you, Council President. Thank you. Any other? Yes, Councilman Brescia. Yes. Um, going, I guess, along the same lines, uh, assumptions were made that this needs to be moved. Um, I did ask to review the drawings. I assume they're somewhere in this building, right? The original renderings, the original architectural and engineering drawings, and then the new drawings created to relocate the project. And, and the reason why I asked for this, and I was hoping that I was gonna be afforded the opportunity to look at it today before the meeting, was number one, I don't know that it's a safety concern um, when you're doing the other building. I don't know when you're doing the other building. We don't know what you're gonna build for the other building, right? Because what came in was three times the cost of what the original estimate was. So I think we were originally saying it was gonna be four million and then it came in at like 12 or something like that. Um, so th there's a lot of unanswered questions and yes, I'd like to review these documents to see that this here isn't a mistake um, as my council colleague was kind of asking, um, that it should have been in the bid originally 
um, or it, it should have been thought of initially. Um, it, it's the reason why you have drawings. Otherwise, we're sitting here in basically darkness. Um, we believe it might have something to do with safety, but do you know exactly what the safety concerns are? The safety concerns are the fact that if the bleachers are located where the groundbreaking will happen with the sports center, um, that there's all of kind of construction debris going on in that area. So you don't necessarily want to have um, school children or anyone there for that matter. How many feet away is it? And the reason why I ask, let me just tell you this. Uh, I've done work on many buildings in New York City. You've seen them. You, work, you walk underneath sidewalk bridges, right? They have scaffolding. Um, they have a, less of a, an accident rating than we do here in New Jersey. You know, they actually take safety serious in New York City. Um, you just can't go on a job site and say I'm OSHA approved. You actually have to have a site safety engineer, right? So it's actually a course and a title. So New York takes safety a lot different than we do out here. We're very more lackadaisical out here. Um, so do you know how far away this building is from the stands or any of that? I, I can find out proximity how many feet. Okay, but that's, see, that's where I'm going. We don't have the answers, and that's why I'd like to look at the drawings, because I, I can probably come up with 100 answers. We could sit here for hours, but it's going to have to get back to me, where if I get to look at the drawings, it's pretty simple. I, I'm wondering if it's a secret, and I, nobody can see them, and we're just going to be left with something? Not that I'm aware of it's any uh, secret, but I thought the bid specs were attached, and they're a link because it is so large, and the drawings are on there. Unless you would like to come to our office, and we'll make sure to show That's, you exactly. Yeah, so l l let me explain. When you look at a, on a drawing on my cell phone, right, um, of that size, you, you really can't tell anything. Um, yeah, so I'd recommend you come to our office and so we'll be glad to show you those. That's what I was asking for. I, I know somewhere here you have to have the drawing, so right, could I come by tomorrow and look at them? They could be an engineering sure. um, or something, I, but there, I know there's a copy. Sure. You All right. Come on over tomorrow. Thank you. That's it, Council President. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? Uh, for myself, I do apologize, Mr. Uh, Councilman Brescher. I thought I had forwarded the architecturals in regards to the turf field. I did request the bid spec for the uh, rec center because of the similar question. I can forward you that, that link, which has um, all the information. Um, go to about page 1,780 of it. That's where the drawings start, but. No, Council President, let me explain. Right, I, and I understand. When you're looking at something that large on a cell phone or on a laptop, in my home, I have a 42 inch monitor that I'd normally review drawings on. But when you look at the two next to each other, I don't, I don't have two 42 inch monitors. So that, that's why having a paper set just makes it really quick to take a look at. Understood. Um, in regards to the proximity, um, you'll see that the new pathway goes pretty much right up to the bleachers. Um, but again, you'll see that in the finalized drawings. Um, in regards to why this wasn't a part of the initial turf field, um, these are two separate projects, technically. So in my experience now, it's residential, much different than commercial. But you can't presume that both projects are absolutely going to go through. Because if the sport, if the rec center doesn't go through, then there's no need to actually move the bleachers from the one side to the other side. My question to the administration, or rather request, is that I saw on the rec center that part of that part of the drawings there included for the deconstruction of the bleachers. So my request would be to ask for a credit for that work being done on the rec center side because they are no longer going to be doing that. Um, the uh, company doing the turf field will be doing that deconstruction because they're going to be moving. So that's going to be my request to the administration to look into. Right. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? Seeing none. 10 from the Department of Public Works. A, resolution to release street opening escrows. B, resolution authorizes engineering services for alarm system upgrades, $58,124. 
C, resolution authorizes contract purchase order for windows, frames, and doors for Mini B Veal, $295,302. D, resolution authorizing contract purchase order for leaf bags, $80,840. E, resolution authorizing contract purchase order for Goodyear and Bridgestone tires and tubes, $225,000. F, resolution authorizing contract purchase order for two thermolaser paint line striping machines, $44,849. Any questions, concerns, or comments? Council President. Yes, Councilwoman Shepherdman. Um, for the Mini B Veil, are we putting um, ADA doors or something in there? In that building? I would imagine they have to be ADA compliant. I know that there's four sets of doors that are going to be replaced, um, but we can follow up it. I'll confirm. There should be, but I will confirm. I'm asking because I was there when the first built, when it was built and was built poorly. So I'm just checking on things now. Maybe they're correcting some of the things that were done poorly before. Um, so CME is who we do all our uh, contracts with, engineering service. All our engineering is through CME. To. They are professionals appointed to do to do some of this. No, no, yes. no. I just was wondering because their name is on every paper. I get. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So I'm just like questioning, you know, because every time I turn around to see me, and they're digging in the till again. So I just, you know, just was checking on it. Thank you. Any other comments or questions? <clears throat> Cons uh, okay. Go ahead. I just, I just Go cleared my throat. I had a three-way tie this time. Okay. Uh, Councilman Patil, if that, that's okay. I'll, I'll, I'll pass and let them. Councilman Brescher this time. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. Um, the, the fire alarm, right? This is, um, this is for our building here to make sure that we're going to be, everything's functioning and everybody's safe in this building, right? Because we have, we've had issues over the years with different fire alarm systems. The system that they're going to design um, is it going to be like a proprietary system? And and the reason why I ask that is that fire alarm systems and HVAC systems, the township has struggled. Um, they would design a, sim, a system for like by a Honeywell system. And then what happens is when you bid out the service contract work, Honeywell doesn't win, somebody else wins an item doesn't work and then they come back to you unbeknownst to you and tell you that they have to change the panels and all the motors and everything else and you just believe them when the truth is if you went with the original vendor you'd only be changing out that one little component or, or it would be like a service charge so uh, I know municipal government struggles with this um, can they have a system a fire alarm system that's not a like proprietary system we, we can't because alarm systems are not proprietary in nature and the procurement law would not allow us to do that. So that's why we have to go out to bid. To your point, uh, it is hard sometimes if there's a deficiency or, or there not rather a deficiency, if there's a deficiency, then we would reject the bid. But if we have a negative experience with the contractor, we can certainly note it, come back uh, to the council and if we have to reject the bid. Um, that is part of the challenge, but an alarm system is not a proprietary thing. Well, w when they're designed, they, they are. I mean, the problem that you have here is that you have multiple systems and they don't talk to each other. So if there's a fire, <clears throat> I believe, on the police side, um, it does not trip our panels on this side. So therefore, we're technically the same building, but the one system doesn't talk to the other system. It's my understanding. I thought that's what they're looking to address was because of if it being three different systems to have it under one umbrella system. But then it would be a, and that's what I'm saying. So then are we going to do one proprietary system? Where, where Let's say it's like a, a Honeywell system as opposed to having something designed that could be done by multiple companies. No, it's going to address the entire town hall. So it's, it has to connect every room, every part of this building together to, to obviously correct the deficiency that we're dealing with. Can I ask a clarifying question? And sorry, I'll defer, I didn't mean to interrupt. Yes, no, my, yeah, my, my question is, they're gonna design a system. They're gonna end up picking 
the person that can that can kind of do this. You, you're going to go out to bid. They're going to come up. You're going to end up getting three bids from three vendors, three fire alarm companies. Okay, the low bidder, though, if he puts his system in, because the engineer is just going to give you a smokehead. He doesn't care whose smokehead it is. He doesn't care whose fire alarm panel it is. The engineer is just going to put it in the, the spec. But at the end of the day, if you put in an entire system and then that company is only here for two years, the new company that will bid ends up costing us, it's like your HVAC system. It's, it's why it doesn't work. It's not that it doesn't work or it needs a replacement. It's that you brought so many different vendors in that they bastardized the system. <laughs> is there a way to design yeah. it so that you could have multiple people work on this is where I'm going. If, there were, if I'm understanding correctly, because I think I misunderstood proprietary as in the sense of one system for the entire building versus, for lack of better terms, the manufacturer that may be uh, there, you're saying like where they can be interchangeable, Yes, right? I'm saying right, not one manufacturer, but interchangeable amongst multi-manufacturers, yes, correct. I think that's a, a reasonable ask, just to make sure in case something happens that uh, if a replacement part needs to be done, you know, that... It's a question to the engineer. Right, um, and, and I'll certainly bring that up. So part of their services are to design the system, so Correct. they've been working with our DPW staff in order to address that, and including our fire uh, marshals and officials to ensure that everything is talking to one another. So um, there are several people here talking to one another in order to make sure that the design is done correctly rather than piecemealed. Right. I know our fire chief, chief is very much aware of, of what's going on, um, and, and he's aware of the problems we have. But, right, uh, yes, thank you. Thank you. Um, that was, oh, the thermoplasticizer. The, do, do we need two of these? I mean, do we have that much striping that we're doing that we need two of these units? We do. Um, I mean, talk about crossroads and um, fading, and there's quite a bit to go around uh, with the amount of square mileage we have. And how many of the other lime machines do we have now? I don't, I think one is, we have one and it's down. So that's why we're buying two. Okay. All right. Thank my, you. In my understanding, it's to have both white and a uh, yellow stripe. And I would imagine that you, it's easier to have the two separate because if you change the paint constantly within the machine, like if I'm at, um, in my field, uh, a cabinet manufacturer, if they're changing the, uh, the sprayer constantly, it can cause damage and can, you know, time, all of that. All right, thank you. Uh, thank you. Uh, Councilman, Sorry, I know there was. I'm good. No, oh, thank you. Councilman Patil. Thank you, Councilman Sernan. Uh, the first one is already addressed the alarm system. On C, uh, it's good to see finally we are investing in the mini vehicle and happy to see the out of 295, close to 165, 169 is going to be the grant. So that's a less of a taxpayer's burden. And my ADA compliant question already, my council colleague asked, so that's also answered. Now, only the extended question on that, looking at B and C. While we are going to replace all the doors and windows in mini -Bivel, have we thought about the alarm system there, the fire alarm system? So that's also not in great shape. I was there over the weekend, and believe me, I thought the fire alarm was going to go up, but nothing happened. I believe that will be addressed, and I'll certainly bring it up again. Thank you. And the last one, Council President F, I'm happy to see. Uh, in fact, you know, I gave various areas uh, that need the striping, uh, those stop or the, the crossing, uh, those lines are missing, and hopefully these two machines will be really going to take the speed and we start uh, really striping throughout the town, but especially the more accidents prone area, that will be definitely helpful. And again, really appreciate and thank you for putting this resolution. 
Excuse me, Council. I just wanted to ask one other question. Yes, With the uh, streets Council being Commissioner. halfway made up, how can they put the line down? It? I'm, I'm sorry, I didn't fully capture it. Oh, I didn't streets. fully. The way they're doing the streets, they're just doing like one side of it. Like, I, I can't wait till we do both sides of the street. You know, I mean, like, it's a problem if you only have one side done. I, I understand the question. Just based on my understanding of like the paving list, a lot of those streets don't even have the center lines as, as it is, but I understand the question. For instance, if it were uh, Amboy Avenue where the township operates, if you did one half of the street, then, but I think this would give the flexibility to be able to actually tackle that versus having to wait for a yes, vendor yeah. to, to do no, it. No, I like the fact that we're having two, and like what you said with the yellow and with the white separately, it makes a whole lot of sense because you won't mess up the machines. We'll get a lot of yardage out of them. That's really good. But my concern is it still has been for every other streets. They have done, you know, I keep getting complaints. People keep calling me for streets, that's why. Sorry, sorry I digressed. <laughs> Thank you, and uh, Councilman Patel? Uh, yes, so I just wanted to make a comment on F. I am super excited about this striping machine. This, this is what we've been waiting for for the bike paths. And the question on it, how soon can we have this up and running? <clears throat> I can follow up with you um, tomorrow about the turnaround time for the delivery of the machines. Sounds good. And I want to make a recommendation <laughs> on B. Uh, Councilman Brescher is correct. I think we should be have a foresight to make sure that the, the company that we go with essentially it has a future or they are interchangeable with another system. Cool. So there is uh, something called Matter, which is um, a new... Uh, standard that all the technology companies, Samsung, Apple, Google, and they all have come together that the IoT devices can use to talk to each other. So make sure whatever system we get is matter compliant, and that will ensure that going forward, even if we do decide to switch, they'll all work together. Any other questions or comments? Mm -hmm. uh, for myself, in regards to the, um, the alarm system, kind of a side thing, um, in the backup, it said that they would be doing a CAD drawing of the building. If we're able to get that somehow, I think that would be beneficial for the future of the building or for the township, uh, just because having that type of drawing available to us will allow for us to be able to design things in, in the future. And likewise, as several other council members have said, in regards to the striping machine, I'm really excited to to see the purchase of these because one of the biggest complaints that I've gotten have been the crosswalks, stop signs, the complete street with the bike paths. So I'm, I'm really excited to see the, uh, the good work to come about with this. Moving on, 11, from the Department of Water and Sewer. A, resolution authorizing loan application with New Jersey Infrastructure Bank for the township's water, me water meter replacement multi-phase project and B, resolution authorizing contract purchase order for emergency water main system repair, uh, $1 million. Any questions, concerns, or comments? <laughs> Who wants to go first? You, you can, uh, okay, birthday. Council President. Council, Council <laughs> Woman <laughs> Um With the infrastructure bank for the township's water meter replacement multi-phase project, will this affect us as we go forward to get some more money for them for our sewer system, that's a total wreck. It won't affect it any? No. Okay. Well, oh, not good. Okay. We good. now uh, we're on, we've, we're making one application and we're soon to put in a second application. So. Okay. Um, and, and the second one also, as I said, I even say it to Bob Smith that we just keep doing emergencies. We need to, um, any, any other business would out, be out of business if they just kept doing emergencies and not doing the things that need to be done so we don't run into emergencies. So, eh, you know, because we just keep chipping away at the money and chipping away at it and chipping away at it, you know, because you can tell, even in your wallet, if you keep chipping away at it, by the time it's time for some, you do something big, you don't have the proper amount of money, and I don't want to put that stress on the taxpayers. Thank you. Thank you. Councilman Brescher. Yes, um, with the water meters, this is, we're applying now and we're gonna purchase the meters and then we're gonna apply again 
to have someone install the meters <clears throat> for the installation of it, or we're going to do the install? Council President. Yes, I'm sorry. Thank you. Mr. Smith. Councilman, uh, no, this is a, it's a package. We are going to purchase the meters ourselves. We have a contract. We have it to a, 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 one of the co-ops. We'll purchase the meters. There's a company going to do installs of all the meters in the town. Wow. And within our area, within our service area. Okay. And did we ever settle the, um, the meters that were supposed to have been installed by American Water? What do you the, mean as far as settling? Well, there, there was money that we owed American Water at the time um, based on the premise that on their original contract they were supposed to have replaced all of the meters. I understand these are different meters and these are better meters. These are Tahoes and what they were putting in were the Chevy uh, – <laughs> Um, or, the, or the Fords, but did we ever settle that with them, or did we keep those funds? I can't answer that question. I, I do not know. Um, maybe the attorney could look into that one for us. Sure. Um, okay. And then I have right this whole the the million dollar water main replacement thing. D do we have a, a schedule as to how many? miles of Maine we're going to replace um, or repair this year. You know, I said when I went out there and I looked at the, um, the water mains, the bolts that I looked, wh whether it was corrosion or electrolysis or, or whatever it is, it's probably indicative of, of the entire system. Um, so do we have any kind of plan in place that we're going to be replacing mains we do have a capital plan. Um, all of this is going to be based on going for funding to the iBank. There's some uh, mains we want to connect. Uh, right now, we're in the process of looking at a road to replace the main there. Um, extensions, looping some systems. <coughs> um, we know areas that there could possibly be asbestos mains. We want to get those first taken care of. But all of that work will be will request funding through the iBank. What is on the agenda now is for the just our general emergency repairs. We do most of them ourselves. We don't do any of the state highways. Um, and we also let the contractor do, if there's an automobile accident, they take out a fire hydrant, whatever the case may be. This way we can go to our insurance and we can reclaim that money. Right. But, I mean, as far as the investment, when is that going to take place? And, and, and the reason why I ask this is I, I started, I guess, as a councilman um, when we were doing – our own water and sewer. Mm -hmm. um, we came up with rules that, that we were set to do. Um, we then hired a director, right? With the director hired employees, we've approved a, a ton of money for equipment. Um, and the whole premise was that we were to do the work in repairing our uh, sewer mains and uh, water mains and you know we were going to do all of that and and I understood the first two years as far as getting everything up and running right but those two years have elapsed and then last year we started looking into this whole iBank thing right and that that's not a bad thing that's a good thing um, but now here I am uh, a year later and I'm saying, where are we going forward, and, and when are we going to see this? So I'm, I'm looking for, like, a date, you know, to tell me that by September we should have a list of the mains we're going to do this year and moving forward, or... We have, a, we have a projected list right now, capital, that we are, we, we are going to do. We haven't replaced mains in total internally. Um, we need the funding for that. We've done sections of pipe. Um, we've done multiple repairs. We do everything we can internally in-house. Like I said, the only ones we don't do are on state highways and if it's an insurance claim in the future. This is just to have there in case catastrophe happens. Um, <coughs> each of those projects going forward through the iBank all have to be engineered, and that has to go to the iBank, and also it's going to have to go out for bid each project. Council we President, can't do them internally. May? Um, just to Councilman Brescher's point, I think what he's asking is part of the funding is also that we do an in complete audit of all of our sewer system. So there's a huge portion of the funding that we have to request in order to get that done. Um, so, Bob, correct me if I'm wrong, that's, that's the next step is that we get an, an entire 
view of what it is our sewer system looks so we can have that proactive approach. But in this meantime, uh, what our uh, department has been doing is really putting, uh, fixing as things happen, uh, mm. which is the hand that we were dealt with. Um, but to your point, we are going to work on TVing every line that we can in order to get all of this, um, all of the work done. That's on the sewer side. On the sewer side, right? Right. I, I, I guess, you know, you're fairly new, um, so you don't understand the frustration, I guess, um, that, that I have. You know, because we were told that this was going to happen. We were told that you weren't going out to bid because you couldn't go out to bid because of whatever they made up, which said that it had to be done. In fact, I think it was in the, on the, where we voted, that said that we had to do the repairs unless it was an emergency repair. So with me sitting in this seat, what I'm looking at, and my council colleague at the other end, what, and I know that's where she was going, was what it looks like to us is we are not investing, right? We are not doing this repair work ourselves. What we're doing is we're waiting for it to implode and then we're gonna take care of it as an end around, as an emergency. No, so, that's not true. Council President, when that's he's not finished. True. All right, so can we <clears throat> get, this is where I'm going, can, can we have this list so that I could, you know, go to sleep at night and know that in 2023, I'm gonna do one mile or two miles. In 2024, I'm gonna do 23 miles of, of sewer and of water, right? So that, that I actually see that we're doing this without going as an emergency to do these repairs. Like our sewer, our force mains that we have, mm -hmm. right? There was lists for them to be redone and we should be redoing them. But we go out to bid because what happens is they die, right? And then as an emergency, they come to council and they seek us to do the, the funding of it. But originally, we were supposed to do all of this. And that's the part what I'm not seeing us do. What I see us do is, you know, the maintenance, like flushing meters. Um, but I don't see us doing the, the major infrastructure upgrades. We're not designed to do major infrastructure. That's, you're talking multi-million dollars. Oh, I... We do all the repairs internally in-house, same on the sewer side, anything large has to go out. Any, We have a capital plan, we have projects listed, we've had it for quite a few months, we've approached, we've gone to iBank, we, we're looking for the funding. We, we don't have the money to do it. I, I can't go out and replace you know, four roads of water mains or sewer mains. We don't have the funding. Well, okay, now... We're requesting that funding through the iBank and it takes time, unfortunately. Okay, when, when you, okay, you're, you're and saying- And I can send you a list of everything we've done since we've been here so on the me, water and me, sewer side. Right, let me tell you where the frustration is. We have the capability of bonding up to $300 million or something currently, right? Before we spend them on other projects, we were committed to spend this on our water and sewer. So when you say that we don't have the funding, we, we definitely, as a body, have the funding it would be up to the administration to put it forward to us. When you say that we can't do this work, I, I believe it was in the, the election that it said that we had to do the work and only repair work was supposed to be done as an emergency by outside contractors. But I, I'll look that up and find that because that's, you know, that's not what I heard from you standing there. What I heard from you standing there was the, the opposite of what I recall. I can just tell you what I'm familiar with. And like I said, on the water side, we do all the repairs internally ourselves <clears throat> right now. Um, I, I know it's unusual. Could I ask a question of a council colleague? I believe Councilman Patil was on that committee. Well, do you recall whether we were to do the work except for emergency work? I don't know, council person would like to go Q and A uh, here, but you know, uh, I'll be happy to talk to you. Okay. I was part of that committee, and that's the reason I had the questions on those two line items. Oh, uh, okay, I'm fine. Thank you. Uh, thank Council you President. very much, and thank you, Council President. Thank you. Council, Council President, Moore. I disagree with Councilman when Joyce Ship, and I disagree with Councilman Brescher. And there are some points uh, Mr. Brescher brought up, <clears throat> but just to address Councilman Ship first, is that it's unfortunate we have emergencies. 
And these are just not predictable. I mean, we need a crystal ball to figure out when a pipe's going to break. And this is status quo across the state addressing these issues today. Now, although I do believe sometimes in the near future we should sit down as a committee to do a comprehensive plan of what we are going to improve and what we could do to avoid, but to step forth and say that we haven't done enough and we could do more, you know, we've also you know, upfitted an entire department in 32 months, got up and running, corrected over 3,000 different pipe uh, breaks uh, and leaks. We found bypasses, also part of Councilman Brescher's uh, investigation. I mean, we've made remarkable change. And I served, as well as Councilman Brescher, on, in, in our term running for election on this, on this cause. And I believe we all still stand together. But what's forgetful here is what is predictable and what's not, and how we have to act on a reactive point and a proactive point. Unfortunate that some days, financially, it's reactive until we get moved to this path that other council members want to see. But today, we're not there. And our critical, critical assessment is going to happen. Our forest mains are going to be looked at. And when we stood before this council, and there were just a few of us, and I remember standing alone against the Lanky administration trying to bring in Suez for $840 million in a 40-year loan. Even their assessment was only on, based on useful life that was done by Mom McDonald. And each one of these council members tore up that report because it didn't mean much at all. But still today, everything in this town is just based on useful life because we couldn't possibly today in 32 months have you know, fit out a company, trained men and women and staff, created a, a system for um, customer service. We've moved ages forward. And let's look back at the other administrations that were here, okay? We had a d director that went from cutting grass to running our town, all right? Prior to that, we had another director that was here for a long time. And with this administration today and your, direct, your move as director, we've done so much in this department. So although I will disagree with Councilman Ship that she'd like to, emergencies not to happen, sure, but just not predictable. And although... Again, disagreeing with Councilman Brescher as my colleague, who we stood forth together on this issue, I, you know, what I will say is it's not possible tomorrow. It's not possible to, um, to criticize you today for what you've got done. You've done a remarkable job. I think you're, we're very lucky to have you, Bob. Thank and you. any time I want to reach you, you've gave me great uh, answers to questions. And I may agree or disagree with some spending some days, but it's needed and has to move forward. But... I think collectively this group and what Councilman Brescher wants to see is a comprehensive plan of how we're going to move forward and how we're going to, and I don't want to speak for him, but what I'm feeling is th that we'd like to have some comprehensive plan over the next two years, what will, how you will and, how, and what will be directed to be assessed on your most critical uh, points first. Although you can't hit the whole town, we're still going to have these same mistakes, but if it's spending $300 million in one shot, if the administration agrees, uh, I'm not. I'm not here to argue that point, but it's a. It's a lot of men and women on the ground, and, and it's going to have to be contractors. We. I've seen Talmadge Road. It was a 50-foot hole in the ground. I felt it was like it was the size of, of one of the tower holes in 9/11. It was a very big hole, and uh, enormous that day. I'm quite certain we have many like that. that are way out of our scope. However, we we do need to look at them and how that will be addressed. So. I just want to share my point, and, and I'm not frustrated. I'm happy where this administration is. And other councilmen men, men in the past didn't agree with us, and I think we're in the right direction stepping forward. Thank you. Council um, President. Well, I don't, I, I understand. I think Councilman Patil was, yeah. and I'll, absolutely, I'll defer to you, just to go with. First time speaker, okay. <laughs> Thank you, Council President. Uh, on the first one, the A, the resolution, uh, I was on the uh, that water sewer committee, our utility committee that we set, and my understanding was we had reserved some funds. We won't be releasing that to American Water for the fact that they failed to replace the water meters. So when we are saying that we want to go to the, we want to take, go to the NJ infrastructure bank to get those funds. My question is, 
and you may not have answer right away uh, but this was already discussed back then and we said we won't be releasing their money which was in escrow or deposit until we hash out or we do all our due diligence how many new meters need were needed how many meters were missing there is a whole lot of logistic the inventory was put together and we are supposed to secure that fund so i'm happy to support this but at the same time i don't want to lose an oversight on that we lost the fund or we didn't do our due diligence i knew the township was holding back money with american water for all the things we found wrong um whatever happened with that i was never informed i don't i don't know what happened with that okay so that will be again as i said like you may not have the answer but that will be through council person question to administration can we okay <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll note it. Down. Okay, so 100%. Can we find out you know what happened? I know that it was a substantial amount, and we are anticipating a uh, good amount of money so that we don't invest back into the water meters. We are only supposed to invest into the inventory for the new meters, not something that was supposed to be replaced, not supposed to be for the water meter. They were dead, uh, missing, or any of those things. So if we can get that information, uh, that will be helpful. going back to two and we may agree to disagree but i agree with councilman brusher this was one of the big thing uh, that it was as a part of the utility company that we should be self sufficient i know that the focus might have shifted from uh, replacing the water lines to probably prioritizing finding out where the leaks are are we charging things setting up a customer service and i get that it's a good thing at at the same token i have to give the credit to you that you have done an amazing job in last 3 years i'm not uh, downplaying that at the same token the impression that was given to the committee was a little different uh, we were not aware that we have so many missing meters or uh, meters were not working and that type of stuff uh, focus could have been shifted as i said like as far as the emergency work and again this was explicitly one topic was discussing unless and until we can't do it and it it has a very i would say a specific language we were not supposed to outsource this work however i understand that the state highways or any of those we don't cover and if you need this money for those type of projects i'm happy to support that however if there is any emergency that happens throughout the town which is not part of the county road or the state road that i just need a confirmation from you that we are self sufficient to handle that yes we do those repairs thank you uh and this council has supported heavily in funding the department so that we are self sufficient and happy to understand that we are self sufficient now coming back to the plan and which i'm pretty sure all of us are curious to understand what's your path forward uh and i have said that when mayor lanky was in office when we were talking about the community center don't say that it's coming tell me it's going to happen in 5 years 10 years 15 years but give me something and that's where i'm looking and i think you know my council colleague is also saying we are not expecting miracles it's not going to happen next, like this year or the next year it's a huge project we all understand that uh, even the swayz has said that it's going to take them years probably 10 15 years to replace every single uh, line in the township humongous work so i'm not saying that it has to be a year or two but if we can give i would say the high level plan or your vision from the department side uh might take 10 years and this is what we think we can cover the sections of the town and here is the plan again it's a plan could change based on the funding based on the support that your department might get in near future but at least we need to see something on the paper and that's the ask we have that perfect thank you thank you council president mr freeman I'm sick I'm sick of the fake indignation by our council member and I said matter of fact less maybe because I'm a woman I'm not allowed to say it I said less than councilman Brescher and less than councilman Patel same information I've never said that you didn't do the proper work but they said the same thing I said about the emergency stuff and I still remember me being president getting the votes for you to start the water company and i do recall the person who's speaking voting no on you actually starting the actual water company 
So that's why I say fake indignation and processing problems, because what I'm saying and what you're hearing is two different things. Council President. I can go to Councilman okay. Patel real quick. Hey, I just had a question. I understand this is the same issue all the towns in New Jersey are facing because this is old infrastructure. Mm -hmm. If we were to replace all the water lines in town, has any other town done that that's similar to ours? No. Okay. And how much would that cost if we were to do that? I couldn't even I couldn't even tell you that number. It would be on the hundreds and hundreds of millions of dollars. And would the residents be happy with all the reconstructions that we'll be doing around town? Not digging up all the roads, every road in town, not in our area. And I wouldn't think so. Uh, yeah, so. It would be years to get that accomplished. And you said you had a plan. What? How long in the plan is? I understand emergency. You can't predict that. Mm -hmm. uh, but what's the plan years. to mitigate this? What's the plan to make sure we have less emergencies like this? Well, we've addressed areas that, like I said, we have to loop some mains. We have to put in new mains. Um, We've addressed them first. We addressed where we know we have asbestos. We feel we have asbestos. We want to yep. get them removed first. So we do have a pecking order and we do have a list and we're going to go about that. Okay. And how long would that take to complete that plan? That, that there should just take a, a few years. That, years. We should be able to do that. And like I said, the, the request for the funding for the iBank is in. We're just waiting for their approval and then once we go, we'll put the projects out uh, for contractors. We have to go through procurement laws. And once that's done and we get the contractor in, we'll start the work. We've also looked in internally to getting uh, a contractor in to do um, cleaning and relining of water mains. Mm -hmm. um, we're working with the procurement right now to try to get that out. Um, so that'll be another tool we'll have in our toolbox to get some work done. That sounds good. Thank you. Sure. Thank you. Councilman Mercer. Yes, I, I just wanted to clarify because my council colleague to my left um, said that I'm being critical, um, I guess, of you. Um, I feel I've always supported you. I felt that I've approved everything for you that you've asked for. Um, I'm happy with the progress that we have made up until last year, like I stated earlier. Um, my hope for last year was that at that point we were going to start to do this work ourselves. The, the part where I've become a little unhappy is, you know, hearing that we're going to outsource um, the repairs of this because from, and I'll find where it, where it has it that we were supposed to do it ourselves. You know, the idea wasn't that we were going to have one guy and just outsource everything. The idea was that we were going to do it as a water company. Like Middlesex Water, up by me, I live on the north side of town. I don't have American Water. I have Middlesex Water. And they opened up Grove Avenue, right? And there were trucks. They didn't say Fletcher Kramer or anything on them. They said Middlesex Water on them. And they're there doing that repair work. I mean, their lines up there are younger than our lines down here. And and they're putting in this money into the infrastructure. Now, what the residents here don't know is that people on the north side of town that have Middlesex water, we pay more than the people that have American water. American water is actually cheaper. Now, there's a reason why it's cheaper. It, it's regulated by a government agency and a government agency only allows you to make X amount of a profit. So Middlesex, the reason why it's more expensive to me is that they're investing in that infrastructure, right? So yes, those rates are gonna go up on the south side. Um, and hopefully they go up to what we pay on the north side because the north side, Middlesex Water is investing in the water company. And that's what I'm looking for from my residents here in Edison on the south side. Okay, it's the same commitment of investing in the infrastructure, and I'm, and I'm looking for your whole plan for this, right? And I'm at a point now where I'm saying I'm becoming grumpy about it, right? So put something together with the administration, give us what your plan is, but, but don't leave us with having to just do repairs, you know, that are on an emergency basis. So it's not about the work that you did before. I'd like to just reiterate that. You know, this is about 
us moving forward and, and what I'm looking to see moving forward. My council colleague made it out like I, I didn't like the work that you did in the past and set everything up, and that, and that is totally off key right there. Um, that would be it, Council President. Thank you very much. There's Thank nobody you. in this room who wants that taken care of more than me. <laughs> it's my license. It's what I go to bed thinking about. Um, trust me, I, I want to get it done. Middlesex Water is a private company. They don't have the rules that we have to follow with purchasing and procurement. And I worked for one of those companies before. And if I needed something done, I just got it done. It was a lot easier and a lot faster. We have rules. We have regulations we have to follow. Sometimes it drives me crazy because the process is so slow and so long and time consuming. It's just, it drives you crazy. But we're doing our best. We do have that plan. We do have a water plan. We have a wastewater plan. Um, I'm more than ready to put it into place. And also we do all in our region, we do all the emergency repairs ourselves, except on state highways or less. It's a huge, a huge issue but we do it all ourselves on the water side within our area. We do all the emergency repairs. And I have a list for the years we've been here, every work order, every repair we've done, fire hydrant replacements, I have all of that. I can give it to Sonya if you that, like. That I've seen, I just didn't see the, like, We have a capital plan. I didn't see main replacements. I didn't see the, you know, that's what I didn't see. Right, we, we haven't done any main replacements, total main replacements, no. But that's on the capital list to be done. And like I said, we are waiting for the funding through the I Bank to go after that. Okay, I'll review that plan again. Thank you. Any other questions or? Yes. Yes, Council Vice President yes, Harris. I just want to thank Bob Smith for your stick to itiveness and hanging in there during some tough questions, but you're patient and I know you're doing your best to answer the questions, the good questions that Council is raising. So I uh, just wanted to thank you for hanging in there. Thank, Thank you, you Councilman. Councilman, just I want to add one more thing. Yes, uh, Councilman Patil. Whenever I send the email, the fastest response so far I have received is from the Water Department. So thank you. Okay. Thank you. Um, for myself, I have two questions, if possible. The meters that we're looking to replace, um, I know we are doing the smart hydrants. Would they be along the same line in regards to the updated technology? Yes. In that aspect? This these meters are going to be smart meters. Um, there will be no need for meter readers to be out in the field any longer. We will be able to get that data directly into the billing office. Yeah. They'll be able to see the readings. They can, if somebody called up, they're moving, whatever the case may be, they'll get the exact reading at that time. We can shut meters off if we needed to. We can see if somebody's tampered with the meter. We'll have all that information electronically into one center, and it'll be probably in the tax office for the girls in the, in the billing department. It'll all be through radio. Um, some of the newer meters we installed, we can just change the heads, and that'll take effect. It'll we basically, you won't have to put a whole new meter in. We just got to change the head on it. Um, a lot of the meters, American, they were just run-of-the-mill meters. Um, we found a lot were older meters wow. that they never really did replace. Um, we identified them. Um, but this is going to be every... Every resident in our area will get it, one of these new, these smart meters. Will that assist with um, detecting leaks and yes. such like that? Yes, and, uh, the, and also the hydrants will do as well out in the field in the distribution system. If we have a leak between two hydrants, it'll let us know where that leak is. Thank you. And in regards to um, the emergency water main system, I know that earlier in the year we approved an additional amount of 250 for P&A. Um, is there still money available from that resolution for use? And the second question is, um, I didn't see it as a breakdown between the different uh, the different vendors that we are approving, but is there a certain amount allocated to a certain vendor versus the other, or is it just all encompassing? No, if there's a repair we can't handle, PNA is our water contractor. They will do the emergency work that we cannot handle, and we do know what they have done, and we know what we have done. I, the dollar value, I, I don't know off the top of my head if there's anything. Yeah, I'm, I'm not worried about the, uh, well, if you can find out how much has been used oh, from sure. the previous, uh, I'd appreciate that. Um, and in regards to the repairs that have been done from PNA, I can share with our, um, my colleagues here, because you did provide the list before, um, in regards to ones that were specifically emergency with PNA. So thank you. Any other questions, comments? 
That's a question for him. Freeman. So the meter readers is going to be extinct jobs because as we go more and more toward technological things, we're just cutting out different other people's jobs. Not, not so much that you're trying to. No, we won't be cutting out the jobs. We'll still need technicians to go out if somebody calls with an issue, or, uh, you know, a leaking meter, whatever the case may be. But we'll just incorporate those guys into our regular workforce. Nobody's, nobody's going to lose their job. That's what I was concerned yeah, about. No. Thank you. Thank you. Thank nobody's you very much. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Any other? Councilman Patel. Uh, Sonia, I just wanted to follow up. What happened to the, Ameri the money that I held back from American Water? Can we get an answer for that on Wednesday? And as how much was you know how much did we held back and then what was it used for? Thank you. Any other questions, comments? No, that's good. <laughs> uh, Twelve from the from the township clerk. Resolution approving of liquor license renewals for 2023 to 2024. Any questions, comments, or concerns? Council person. Yes. Uh, council just a curious. Council. No question. As uh, just curious that we approved. I think last council meeting. Mm -hmm. There's a full one and a half page or two page of the renewals. And again, the renewals are coming. Was there any reason that we didn't stack everything together and renewed with the different dates, the renewal dates? The reason why we have more to renew is no. because they still didn't pay or have tax clearance. There's other factors. So as that comes in, you know, that's when they're on the agenda. Okay. The, the clerk can only approve them once all the information is provided to the state. Okay, got yeah. it. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? 13, from the Chief of Police. A, resolution authorizing contracts purchase order for law enforcement equipment and supplies, 300,000. B, resolution rejecting sole bid for school crossing guard services. And C, resolution authorizing abandoned vehicle auction. Any questions, comments, or concerns? Council President Yes, yes Council on, Vice President Harris. On B, do we have a contingency plan for, let's just say, we don't have a real big window for the crossing guard situation. Do we have a con contingency plan if none of the other bids are acceptable? Um, first, the deficiency in the bidding requirements was that they did not provide a consent assurity. Mm -hmm. It's a, a pretty fairly standard document. However, so what we'll do is um, we're looking at the bid specs because that may or may not actually be a requirement necessary for this kind of bid uh, unrelated to construction, that is. So um, what we'll, do, we'll have enough time in order to send it out and get it back. At that, hopefully at that time we'll get something. If not, then what we will do, we'll have a conversation with our, um, our police department and, and try to enact um, what exactly what we're going to do. Um, with our staff, the current staff that we have, they may be a possibility, um, certainly so. But we're hopeful that with having this change, uh, not having it as a requirement necessarily, that we could go and, and get probably more than one bidder, to be quite honest with you, um, because it is a heavy lift to, to have to provide a consent assurity. Mm -hmm. It is, but it is a small window that we're dealing with here. You know, and that's, that's my concern. So I hope there is some contingency plan that is in place just in case. Um, just as a further step, um, that if we go out to bid again and, and we are not su successful, we can, with the procurement walls, go out and negotiate a contract with a vendor. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Any other? Yes. Councilman Brusher? Yes. The, um, our crossing guards... In total, I guess you sent me that that we spend six hundred thousand dollars, I guess, a year with with pay and benefits for crossing guards, and then we had two hundred thousand dollars roughly with our police department. Is that for overtime with the police department? Could I get what that breakdown was? Um, that w the breakdown uh, comes out to sixty five dollars an hour for the police department for the police officers. Right, but I'm saying. Can, can I get a, a list of what that overtime was for the police officers that amounts to the $200,000? Sure. My, my question is, did we put more police officers on $200,000 worth for 180 days, right? Because that's the kids go to school for 180 days. Um, is that what we spend in overtime or, or is that what we're saying we spent because I know that 
we have, I'm making a number up, 15 patrolmen patrolling the, the town at a given time, let's say. Um, they're still going to be patrolling. So what I'm saying is, are, are we going to save that 200 grand when we outsource this? Or is that, is the police department's budget going to be cut by $200,000? Or is their budget going to remain exactly the same and we're going to outsource this crossing guards? Um, so b b part two of this conversation is the uh, safety aspect uh, of it, and I have uh, our lieutenant here who can cover that. Um, this isn't necessarily just a uh, sort of cost analysis to exactly what's happening. It's also an issue of safety, so I can let the lieutenant address that issue. Thank you, Sonia. Councilman, so I don't know what those numbers are. I believe those numbers are based on what it, uh, average numbers of what it would cost to pay those officers that are on duty. So to answer that question, no, I don't think it changes as far as budget. I think the safety concern, former, I was in traffic, as everybody knows, this was a major problem, has been a major problem since I got here yeah. that I tried very hard to tackle. I apologize that it's still going on. The concern was always the safety factor of putting all those officers out. So uh, I worked the night shift, but the, the day shift officers typically our minimum number of officers, it's not 15, it's 12 on a day shift. So when they're covering those, those crossings, and, and I've seen it upwards of, you know, in, in bad times, upwards of 15 crossings uh, where, where officers are running crossing to crossing. Those children are obviously a priority. Their safety is our, obviously a priority, as is everything, but we, we're only so many people to, to be in so many places at the same time. So what ends up happening is these officers are stationed on those posts they can't leave because if that, God forbid, that kid comes and, and something bad happens, you know, I, I don't know that I could, I could live with myself with that, and we certainly don't want don't to do that and don't want to have the liability for the township. So uh, those officers stay on those crossings. So the, the concern is, or the concern at least from the police department standpoint, is the safety. Uh, so we, when I was in there, we were trying very hard to, to look into other, other venues and other outsourcing, whatever, whatever we had to do. We were unable to recruit at that time. I don't think anybody tried harder to recruit crossing guards than I did. I was out selling <laughs> uh, hard uh, to try to get guards. We did have a little bit of success, but unfortunately we would get one and lose another. We weren't paying enough at the time. I understand that the, the rates have gone up a little bit uh, as far as what we're paying, so that's great. I thank everyone here for that. That's definitely a step in the right direction. Uh, but my understanding is, and again, I'm not in traffic at this point, but my understanding is we're still fairly short. I was, I was told coming in that we're still looking at, uh, with the post that we had, that we, we had done that study when I was in there, with the post that we had looked at, we're still looking at 53 crossings each, each and every day. And currently, according to the numbers I have, we have 41 guards. Some of them cover double posts. Obviously, we're not dealing with it in the summer, but it does become a major, major burden on the police department and more importantly, the safety of our residents. No, I mean, I, I, I do understand. Like if there was an active shooting that was taking a place at the 7-Eleven, we would pull somebody from a post and send them to an active shooting or, or we probably would send them to the active shooting. But, but if somebody had a heart attack or something like that, you probably wouldn't send them. You'd leave them there crossing the children. So I, I, I get that. My question is more like monetary. And, you know, when I hear that you can't get people, it, it should always be an analysis done, okay? And I, I said this before I was on the school board. Um, they went from, like, 40 or 50 bus drivers 20 years ago down to, like, 18 bus drivers. And then when they did an analysis on it, we found that, well, we were so good at negotiating with the union that basically – we kept their rate of pay down so low that we lost half the bus drivers. And when they raise the pay now, mysteriously, I think they're up to about 40 drivers. You know, so, so pay, it, it's not that you don't have people, it comes down to pay, right? And that's where I was going with this, is I'm, I'm interested in seeing what the big comes through because we're, we're not actually gonna get a savings from the police department. So the total amount we're spending on the crossing guards is 600,000. And I'm interested to see what the new company is gonna come in at to say that, you know what? It might've been cheaper if we just would have raised their pay by $7 an hour, um, because then you would have filled those posts. Like I understand Metuchen has posts. 
there was a resident here that was sitting here earlier today, and uh, she personally told me that she applied to be a crossing guard and that Edison did not hire her. You know, so I, I, I now she's the second person that told me that. So, so that's two. So that's where I'm going. I'm, I'm looking more of a monetary type of thing and be able to do analysis to see if there was another way of handling it. I certainly understand that. That's always a concern. The, you know, as far as my touching, they, they have very few posts. They, they don't need to fill as many, as many posts with, with guards. I know when we raise the, and pay is certainly a, a huge incentive, and I, I was a very big advocate for that when I was in there trying to, trying to get that pay up because we were very low at the time. Uh, my understanding is that we have gotten some additional guards with the additional pay, but the, you know, based on the numbers that I was given today, it's still we're in a pretty good hole, and it you know it creates it creates problems, it creates issues. The as far as the hiring process, that was another thing that we looked into when I was when I was in there. It seems that the the process I, I don't know what the story was with the two people that you spoke to, but it seems that the process was a little bit. Cumbersome. Um, we had to do. Obviously, we have to do a, a, a criminal background check. We want to make sure that we put the right people out there with our children. Uh, very important. And then the the medical. And it, I think the medical, from what I was told at the time, was. And I don't know what the rules are. I was just trying to get guards. But I think the medical is was maybe a little bit extensive for some of the for some of the people that might be applying for that position. So we were losing people. You know, based either on some of them on on the, on the criminal background, which I don't want them here, the medical background, we were losing some there as well. So it was it was challenging. So I don't know. You know, I, I understand the budget concerns, and they're they're very valid. I don't know what those numbers are. You know, we'll have to see when those bid specs come back. But uh, as as far as public safety, you know, I mean, that's that's my first foremost my my front line concern always. Um, so. You know, from my standpoint, I guess it, it becomes a price tag on, on the safety. You know, I mean, I don't know what that number is. That's, that's not for me to decide. That's for you guys to decide. But uh, I don't think you can put a price tag on it myself. Well, that's, that's where I go with raising the pay, right? So, so I don't think anyone disagrees on safety. Uh, I don't think the administration does, does either. I mean, I think everybody agrees on the whole safety issue. The question is, do you outsource it, and is that cheaper? Or do you do it in, in-house, and you, you do whatever you have to do? You increase the pay or, or whatever other kind of incentives you need to do to acquire those people. You know, when we talk about Metuchen not needing as much, it, it's all relative, right? Metuchen is this big. They're the donut hole, right? <laughs> or the whole rest of the, uh, the cinnamon bun. So... So we have more people to reach out to than Metuchen does also. So it should be a percentage um, type thing. You know, I, I looked at the same thing. We talked about tickets, you know, that were given out. How many tickets Edison gives out compared to Woodbridge and give to Metuchen? Um, it's relative to size and population. But but thank you. I mean, we'll we'll get to the bottom of this, I guess, in the near future. Come through, please. Is it okay if I actually ask sure, a question? Sure. Okay. <laughs> I know I normally defer out, um, but I think it would help in regards to the cost analysis that was just brought up. Um, in the resolution, it has the amount that the bid was received at. The bid specs, though, specified that the contract term is a three-year term. So it would be good to know whether the amount that's in the resolution is expanded over the three years or if that's on the annual basis? I believe that ask, question was asked of us, and maybe you during an email, and I think it was a breakdown of the three years. I'm gonna clarify that for you though. Yeah, I, I, I did see the response. I didn't get full clarity from it. So if you can follow up, I'd appreciate it. Thank you. Councilman Patil. Thank you, Council President. On the same line, uh, the question on the portion of crossing guard services. Yes, you know, good that we are we are rejecting this. My question here is now we'll be going for out for bidding again, correct? Do we have any clause there to absorb our current crossing guards? Because there are people who are not working for money, but they are passionate about their job, and we don't want to lose those our Edison citizens who wants to give back to the community, as well, you know, people, of course, want to survive with the pay, 
So is there a way that we can have that some sort of a clause saying, can you hire our current uh, crossing guards? Again, of course, with the background check or whatever the, the, their employment clause is. Um, that is part of the bid specifications is that our, our current employees do get first dibs of the jobs here in Edison. Okay, so, but it's not binding on them that they have to... Uh, they have to meet the bid specs, so it is binding. Okay. And the attorney can correct me if I'm wrong, but as long as it's in the bid specs, they have to uh, abide, uh, abide by those requirements. Correct. But is there any clause that if they don't hire those people, there are consequences to... The um, there certainly will be, obviously, when we come to a contract form. Um, in this case, could be liquidated damage or something to that effect. Um, so there are consequences for not going Thank you. through the contract. I'll hate to see that the people who love their job will be, should not be losing their job. Thank you, Council President. Thank you, Councilman Patil. Can, Councilman, can I just follow up with that, Council President? Yes. So my experience when I was, when I was dealing with these companies, these private companies, uh, they had the same concerns that we have as far as getting manpower, getting mm -hmm. people to do this job. So. It, it, in my experience, when I was in there, there was no problem hiring everybody that we had. They wanted all those people. They wanted to make sure they kept all those people and added to them. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you. Um, uh, Councilman Rochelle Freeman. I, knew, I know you can't do the whole medical thing. I remember back in the day, my grandmother, that's why she did it, because they had great medical insurance for a couple of hours a day. Um, but would prescription, just prescription only, would that cost us a great deal if we just did prescription, you know, for the, the person that, cause you know, I see a lot of those older people in different day when they go into the store and I see the price of that prescriptions that they have there. So I'm just thinking some people might be out there each time, you know, as if we don't get a good enough bid. I'm just saying, just, th just throw that in the pot, the prescription, to see if you can get like some prescription deals or whatever going on, just in case. Thank you. Any other questions, comments, or concerns? Hearing none. Uh, at this point, we would go to the council member of the planning board. However, our tax assessor has been waiting extremely patient for us to yeah. go into closed session. So if it's okay to do that at this point so that we can uh, assist them with uh, getting home, I think it would be helpful. I'm fine with that. Yeah. Uh, can I get a motion to go to closed session? Is there motion a motion to go to closed session? Second. All in favor? Or Aye. does it have to be a roll call? No, just all in favor, sorry. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. This, uh, this, we're in closed session to discuss the uh, appeals. Thank you.
Uh, good evening. We are back from the closed session. At this moment, I get a motion to reopen the regular work session. Motion to reconvince. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Um, this meeting is reconvened. The time is 8.23 for the record. At this time, we're going to move on to the uh, council member of the planning board. Councilman Patel. Give me one sec. I'm just getting situated here. Okay. So on April 17th, uh, we approved all the resolutions and extensions of the resolution. We heard about two capital projects. I'm sorry, Monday, June 19th. Uh, we heard about uh, two capital projects, one being the Splash Park in Papiani Park, Specifically, the bathroom that will be built as part of it. Uh, this will be great throughout the year. Instead of using portable bodies, we will have actual bathrooms throughout the year, and this will be great during the next Diwali festival when we'll have more than hopefully 15,000 people that we had on the first one. Uh, second, uh, we heard about the two capital projects from school. The James Madison is proposing a 1,555 square foot addition at a cost of 800,000 to what is the currently the multi-purpose room. It will help with the district better serve the food and have proper serving lines. And the second project they're working on is the J.P. Stevens, which is a 50,000 square feet addition, which will include 18 general classrooms and eight labs at a cost of 20 million. This will be expected to go to bid by end of July and August. The construction timeline given is around 18 months. There were two cases, the old case number P02-2023 uh, at 25 Irving Street, LLC, carried from May 15th, and no re notice was given. Uh, this was denied. Uh, in my opinion, they did not prove the benefits to the Edison residents. Uh, second case was P22-2022, JUST Nation, LLC, carried from May 15, 2023. No re notice was given at 271 Meadow Road, block number 366.01, lot number 13.17. Uh, this was put, being pushed to July 17th, and that's all I have. Thank you, Councilman Patel. 15, unfinished business, business ordinances for further consideration, public hearing, and final adoption. Any questions or comments? At this time, we'll move on to discussion items. I'll start to my right, Councilman Brescher. The when when the public comments, and I'd like to comment. Uh, the reason is that they're here and they could hear my answers. Um, currently, who's ever watching, I'd like you to know that there is absolutely zero people sitting in the chairs in front of us. So I'm not gonna comment to nobody. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman Coyle. <clears throat> Thank you, Council President. Um, first, I just wanted to speak to the administration about the Elizabethtown Gas Company. Um, first, uh, I just wanna share that the Dozens of complaints I had on Amboy Avenue for the work they did across our business community there. Um, first, uh, most businesses who came to complain said they weren't properly notified. Um, I did approach uh, a gentleman uh, on their last day. He said a mailer did go out. And I cross-referenced with half the businesses on the block. No one received the notice. And I guess what I'm asking for is for some type of committee meeting prior to them engaging in certain main roads. Um, prior to this, I've had other complaints of them working in residential areas. And you know some of that <clears throat> is understandable and some of it's not. But to come to a, a main road, to come down a business community and not properly notify everyone when you're gonna be digging, what time you're gonna be digging, how long people will be without gas and what delays they'll have before they're back up in service, which is dead wrong. 
And the communication prior to this was only through kind of a luck of a draw uh, that I was at an organization meeting and I met someone who was available for me to make a contact. And, and coincidentally, they wound up on Amboy Avenue and I was able to ask questions and I had a direct contact. But prior to that, for someone who's on Amboy Avenue, more than some people want to see me on Amboy Avenue, but uh, I, n nobody was notified. And their workmanship through their contractor, Skoda, was, was terrible. I mean, how they operated and how they you know, worked in the, in the neighborhood for the business community was just wasn't good for business at all. And when I approached them um, about their traffic, which I, I, I think they changed uh, according to the recommendations of the, our traffic division, um, the first night they were directing traffic up 6th Street down to the library to turn around and come back. Now, this is witnessed by several residents who live on that block, and I won't name them, but I, uh, they've called me several times that evening. So it made no sense to take you know, hundreds of cars down a block over three you know, blocks, which have dips in the road, to go down to the library and turn around and come back. So their signage was terrible. Everything from the start was just wrong. And I would hope that we can be more involved before we allow them to start, that there's an engagement meeting and some community involvement. Uh, and the other part was they made a lot of dust. I got a lot of complaints about you know the windows on the, on the main drag, cars that you know need to be cleaned. And so far, I have not had one phone call on what they will do for the community for their work. Um, and I think that's just wrong. It, 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 it's wrong that they're not coming back to make good to the business community for whatever it may be, what they're allowed to do, not allowed to do um, within their ethical uh, boundaries of, of their work process. But it, um, the community's not happy with Elizabeth Town Gas. I mean, prior to this, they've they jacked, the ra jacked the rates during the most difficult times of, of, of residents you know, having bills. And um, on top of that, they come to the neighborhood not just for a small route, but they do a one mile stretch ac across the main drag and not communicate with one public official, not one you know, neighborhood uh, community leader. No one was notified at all. So I hope we can back into this and bring SCOTA into the room of who's in charge and how we go moving forward before we allow them to, to start work. Um, because if, if this is how they act on the main drag, I can only imagine how they're acting in back roads in front of people's homes. So I just, uh, you know, today the, the communities, from the complaints I had, they got an F with how they deal with the, the public. And I'm, I'm sad on how they, they, their actions were taken. So could, can there be a, a contact through the administration, through the council president that we get a phone call? Sure, I'll, I'll get that to you. And the one person I had to contact during the time the project was going on, she was in England. So we had about a six hour time difference. So what sense that made her being in charge of being the point person for this project made me even more upset because by the time residents were calling me when we're gonna be closed, when they're gonna be coming through, how long, my drag time with her was five hours before she got back to me. So when I'm texting her, she's sleeping and by the time I get up, it's 12 o'clock. So it, 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 it was just sad and I have more to list but I'm not gonna go on and on with that. But. Um, I'm gonna pause for a second. I know I wrote a bunch of things I wanted to comment on, and I'll be brief and keep because some people have to get home here. Um, I'm gonna leave that at that for now, Council President, and yield my time to my council colleagues. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Council Vice President Harris. Yes, it, uh, I agree with Councilman Brescher. It's difficult speaking to an empty room, but I'm going to do so anyway and hope that there are some people watching. Just a brief comment about, I am of two minds about the mayor's recent trip to Washington, D.C. to meet with Prime Minister Modi. It was no doubt a great honor for him to get this invitation from the Biden administration. And so I totally understand, especially given his Indian heritage, 
the two minds have to do with, and I'm not necessarily criticizing the mayor for having done this. The two minds have to do with going back to last year and the India Day event and the bulldozer and the Modi's picture on the bulldozer. And then the very contentious meeting we had on August 22nd that was just about to devolve into a food fight. And um, I, I can't help but think about Sam Khan, the late Sam Khan, who left us way too early and uh, his death being so sudden and unexpected, and the fact that we have Eid al-Adha coming up this week. And I just, I don't know what message this visit sent to our Muslim community. I know the mayor said that he represent, he was there in Washington, D.C. to represent Edison, all of Edison, uh, but uh, but the Muslim community also makes up a good chunk of Edison. And so I'm just putting this out there that I'm uncomfortable. And I know when he first mentioned that he was going to be making this trip, I definitely can understand the honor of it. Um, but I know I felt uncomfortable then, and I feel uncomfortable now. And I just need to make that statement on behalf of everyone. And, and I'm, I'm not necessarily saying he should or should not have done this. I just needed to get my feelings out there and, and hopefully speak for also the, the Muslim community and uh, thinking also of Sam, the late Sam Khan. Thank you very much. Thank you, Council Vice President. Councilman Patel. So I actually have to go back uh, to the planning board. I've missed one case. Uh, so case number P17-2022. Uh, CRP SG Edison Industrial Owner LLC carried from May 15. We noticed at 1000 New Durham Road and 45 Gladys Court, block number 55 lot number 8, 10.01. Uh, he was proposing to merge two lots and to redevelop the merged parcel with an industrial use, including a demolition of one existing structure and installation of additional surface for parking for cars and vans. Uh, this was carried to August planning board meeting on August 14th. Now, in terms of the discussion items, I uh, uh, wanted to discuss how our ordinance uh, does not really define the difference in distribution center, e-commerce center, fulfillment center, and warehouse. And this was an issue brought up by Councilman, um, Council President John Pointer quite a bit early ago. And this is something I noticed as well, uh, listening in on planning board meetings. And this was discussed with the Chief of Staff, Robert Deal, and he has assured both of us that we will be making changes and defining what this are. So when the developer can come in, they can tell us exactly what they want to build. Is it a distribution center? Is it an e-commerce center? Is it a fulfillment center? Or is it a warehouse? And we can tell them what we are looking for, where would we want them to be located in our community, rather than them telling us nothing and us just allowing this to happen. So this is something the Chief of Staff has assured us that we will be on July meeting, and I look forward to that being there. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman <clears throat> Patel. Councilman Patil. Thank you, Council President. <clears throat> I have a few attempts here through Council President to administration. What is the status on our road paving program? How far we are out of 160 water streets? 50%, 70% closer? Uh, we're well over 70%. Um, actually, we, we have some uh, leftover funding, so that will we'll be able to do more streets than anticipated. So I'm happy to report that. Perfect. Thank you. Continuing on the same topic, now we are resurfacing these roads, or, or they already paved some of them. On quite a few of those roads, you will find the speed humps. And there was one email that went out to you and I think the engineering department. This refers to Farm Haven Road. Uh, this road is from Oak Tree Road to Calvert. Also use, you know, it, it's, it has a good traffic. However, there are million dollar houses. And it was a very tricky situation. I believe it was a two years ago uh, when the, the resident who She's the engineer, she's the architect engineer, and she had this problem, her plan was approved and speed hump was right in front of her 
driveway. And she questioned, saying, you know, why the speed hump is there? And, and anyway, you know, she ended up just carving out, changing the driveway for a million dollar house. It looks very weird. Having said that, that time the road was not paved, so the speed hump was there. Now this, that road is paved. And at least I know several residents who reach out to me saying, hey, councilman, can you bring it to administration's attention that we don't need three speed hump on the street? One is probably okay. The second applicant who ha whose plan is approved has exact same problem. It's really on next to his driveway. So this is a high time for us, you know, uh, to correct those type of situations. And let's not put back those speed humps. I know some people like it, but for emergency purposes, I absolutely do not like in my personal capacity. Uh, they are very harmful for uh, when there is a 911 calls or somebody needs to be admitted to hospital. So if you can please look into that very specific, because the road is paved, any point in time, the contractor will go out and put the speed hump, and it will be very difficult for us to remove that. I will follow up with you tomorrow. Thank you. Uh, the next item is the traffic uh, situation of the of Grove and Calvert. I think there are at least three intersections, but specifically the neighborhood reached out to me and, and thank you for forwarding my email to the traffic unit and hopefully they will be uh, installing the, the speed limit side. But there are two problems there. One is the speed limit on Grove Avenue is not consistent. Somewhere it says 25, somewhere it says 15, it may be because of the school, but at least the patch that's right, those weird intersections, those are not straight, uh, cross intersections. They have to literally move car 30 or 40 degree angle and then take the uh, the next exit. So if you can look at those areas, and I'm really happy that, you know, that was one of the reason, you know, I was asking, is there a way we can stripe those roads? You know, again, thank you for having uh, those machines ordered. The last two are really, or three items are really deals with the uh, Flooding issues, again, because I saw the CME, we are awarding them a contract, uh, and again, it's, it's a good firm, they do good work. However, you know, I have not gotten any update on the Summer Street and the Culver's T1 Wheel Parkway uh, engineering study they did. Uh, we spent good amount of time uh, and also money with CME doing the study, the engineering study, they did the specs out, etc. Did we get those documents handed over? to the new engineering firm? I know that engineering has um, done some preliminary work and that was all part of the budget that mm -hmm. we just introduced. So once the budget is adopted, they can begin doing the work. No, I'm, I'm fine from the work standpoint. What my question would be, if we are giving contract or if we'll be giving a contract to CME and if they have done the work prior and if they have not transitioned that work to a new engineering company, that concerns me. That's what I was saying. Is there a way that we can get those documents or hand over for Culver Stewart Will Parkway and the Summer Street? Because they were involved in the engineering study of these projects. Oh, we have those documents in Perfect. engineering. Okay, good. Uh, there was one request on the cleanup, the Elizabeth and Compton Avenue. Uh, I know we had the email exchange, uh, but residents are saying it's not done yet. So if you can please follow up on that as well. Elizabeth and Compton. And my last question brings back to Durham Avenue. You know, thank you, Councilman. I was very curious too. I know we can't discuss some of those matters, and hopefully we'll have the master plan that would also dictate what those zonings will be around that neighborhood because that's really the block surrounded by the residential area that is, I would say, very central to uh, the commute for the residents. And if this project goes through, it's going to be really, uh, you know, the big, big challenge from the traffic standpoint of view. Thank you, Council President. Thank you, sir. Councilwoman Schiffman. Uh, I have a question about um, the 75 roads that are supposed to be done by PSENG. Can I get the name of those roads? And this other guy that's a veteran all the time, he keeps asking me over and over about Winthrop. Winthrop. How do you say it? Win Winthrop. Winthrop. He keeps asking me over and over again about that street being not taken care of. And I spoke to 
a couple of people from the Clara Barton section, and they they moved there recently, and they're a little upset with the uh, overdevelopment on that on Amboy Avenue at this particular time at all. But I'm like the rest of them. I'm not I'm not talking to a um, an empty room. It feels better when you're talking to people within the room. And uh, let's see, last thing. Oh, I still um, still trying to get a um, a law a law bill read out about the amount of money we're we're spending on uh, just the um, Oprah at all. And I know everybody's trying to tell me that we spent all this money before, but we didn't. We didn't do Oprahs all the time. So on everything, and, and let me tell you something. I know the lawyer has to look up certain things that may come into conflict within the mayor and within you know us as a body. But some of the petty stuff I, I, I want to know, are we using our lawyers for that also? All right, because uh, it's a lot of uh, money being spent and uh, a lot of the younger people and the people with children they don't want to go back to work now. So I don't know how that's going to run back. I don't know how that's going to go, but it's a great opportunity now for people to uh, engage with those office buildings. So maybe you can make preschools out of them. Maybe you can make like charter schools. Maybe you can use, you know, use, use them for different things than they're being used for now. So I don't know if they're going to make them go back to work or not. So. We'll see. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman Michelle Freeman. Um, as for myself, just in response to Councilman Patil about the roads, uh, the BA is fairly accurate. I spoke with uh, Brian from Engineering in preparation for the last meeting. We were at, he had said 76% at that point. So I think that was two weeks ago, figuring we're there in a little bit more. Um, and it was mentioned before just about uh, affordable housing. Um, if I could request the administration kind to make it more noticeable on the website, it's a little bit difficult to find. It's under the About Edison uh, subsession, and it redirects you to affordable affordablehomesnewjersey.com. But for anyone that is interested in a phone number, 609-664-2769, extension 5. Uh, that would be it for myself. Council President. Yes, uh, I just want to comment on Councilwoman Joy Ship Freeman's about the Oprah. I disagree. Can we, can, do we have to go two or three? I disagree, times? Council President. Do we? It's, I have the floor. I'm allowed to comment. I have the floor. He had his I'm, opportunity already. I had the floor. So at that point, um, I'm being advised that because we're moving, I was about to go to adjournment that discussion items are over. I don't want this to become Respected aids. Council President. Thank you. Thank you, sir. At this moment, I get a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye.